Hi guys, how is everyone doing? Uh, today, what I want to talk about is the importance of uh, change control and uh, configuration management in your Splunk environment um, and also backup, right? Uh, because as we all know, right, uh, Splunk do have capability of backing up your data, but then what it does do is uh, does not do is uh, it doesn't have a uh, native capability to back up your configurations uh, so it's up to you as your as the organization to make sure that all your configurations are backed up because uh, if we don't do that what is happening is uh, it's all fun and games right uh, until uh, something happens to your server and it rolls over so if it does happen unfortunately uh, what's going to happen is uh, your environment will be down for quite some time uh, and sometimes all your uh, months or weeks of hard work creating all your configurations will just go right uh, so it's always uh, safe to have a, a backup and a change control in place um, so the same with change control uh, where anyone can make a change onto your onto your environment and then there's no accountability especially if you are managing a large uh, Splunk deployments um, it would be uh, wise to have um, accountability in place uh, so the tool I would like to uh, show you guys is uh, GitLab um, so the reason why I chose GitLab is you can actually uh, host uh, private um, uh, projects uh, and then you could integrate it with CACD uh, once you get your if you if your organization is uh, into devops or you could just use this uh, platform as a, a backing up tool uh, for your configurations and then uh, you could use other features of gitlab like uh, change control and things like that so that uh, you would have proper accountability for your network um, and it, it can also um, help you with your compliance uh, once you meet all your uh, compliance requirements um, so it's quite easy um, so these steps can actually be done on a uh, on a fresh install or on an install that is being run running for quite some time uh, so how we would go about this is first of all we create a new project uh, so I'm going to create a blank project and then I'm going to name it uh, the deployment server yeah so I have a Splunk installation running here and um, I would like to uh, make a full backup of my deployment uh, folder deployment apps all my deployment apps right uh, so that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to create a deployment server project name so I'm going to keep it private I don't want to publish it uh, so I'm going to create the project here uh, for now that's it uh, it's that easy uh, so the next thing what I would do is uh, you would have to log on to your uh, to your Splunk server and then we do a git in it uh, so we initialize it uh, now let's do a git add so basically what what we're doing is we are adding all the uh, files uh, inside the deployment server uh, into uh, git Right. Uh, so what we did is uh, we created a new file called uh, new folder called git uh, right uh, so now what we have to do is we are going to do a commit uh, so I'm just going to say a git commit this is my first upload to GitLab right uh, okay so on my branch master so that is done uh, and now what I will do is I'm going to do uh, add to uh, to my um, my git uh, URL the way where you get it is you can come here and you can check here once you create the project you can have the uh, you can have your full uh, address here right? uh, so that can be done uh, right uh, so it's going to uh, Did I create it before? Uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, so I already added the uh, remote uh, location. So the remote 
already exist uh, so if it, uh, it is done uh, from start you can just run this command like this and then I can do a git push uh, like this so I do my username and my password okay so all the files are pushed to master right uh, so that's it um, so it's as uh, simple as that really uh, so now you can just do a pull and see we, oh no, see what is happening here Branches are up to date. So now the way this works is right. Uh, so here, we what we did is uh, we pushed all our uh, deployment apps to GitLab, right? So if you go to our uh, repository, and then if you check on your master branch, right, uh, you can you can see all your uh, configurations. Right. So the way you do it is uh, now you have a backup of your all your configuration files. Right. You can actually make changes here. You can um, add users, like add contributors to uh, your project if you like. Like you can add your teammates and uh, people to your project uh, so that they can also uh, like um, make changes to your uh, repository. So uh, let's do a small change here. Uh, okay, so now we we are going into your, our Linux input, and then we are to, going to the inputs, and then I'm going to edit the file. Right. So I can edit this file. I'm going to add a new monitor. Right. Uh, so yeah, there's a mistake here. So we don't need that. Uh, GitLab and my, my GitLab. So yeah, uh, so basically what I did is I, I have created a backup, right? And now I'm going to manage all my uh, files from GitLab, right? So I, I'm just adding a new stanza and then I'm going to do a commit, right? Uh, so it's going to tell you, okay, these are the changes that are going to be done. Okay, so I'm happy with it right and then I'm going to do a comment right uh, now I'm going to give a reason uh, for this uh, add a new stance for files. and then you could assign uh, reviewers and uh, things like that so that uh, you can have a sanity check uh, so let's say you have multiple admins on your environment and then you want to push changes like um, serious config changes like uh, etsy server server settings right uh, so if you want to do a sanity check uh, you could do that by assigning to people assigning to reviewers things like that for now this is just a test environment and it's just a deployment server so uh, we can just create a merge request and that's it uh, your data have been merged right it have been merged to the master right so if you check here uh, we can change the branch to master and then Linux input local inputs. so yeah we have the uh, thing here right um, so we can check your uh, comments uh, to see uh, who have made changes right so i uploaded it so it was me who uploaded my first upload to gitlab and then it again i made a change yesterday uh, i made a change right now uh, and then i can go in and see what i changed so like six months down the line right uh, if you're using gitlab you can come back here and then you can find out who actually made the change right okay 
So now uh, changes are done, and so this is this is sitting in GitLab, right? Uh, so uh, what we have to do is get the same files uh, back to your uh, back to your server, right? Uh, so how do how we do it is uh, we do uh, so there's two ways to do it, right? Uh, so we can do a git uh, pull. Okay, so we, we see the corn files have been changed, right? Uh, so if you do cat, uh, then org, Linux input, local input conf, right? Uh, we can see we have added the new stanzel, right? Uh, so that way, what we did is you don't even have to go into your um, deployment server to make the changes you do it on gitlab so that all your changes are, are are recorded right so you put a practice in place right uh, so that and you and uh, you ensure that you follow the practice right you don't make changes to the server directly you make changes via gitlab uh, so that way you have a backup uh, of your uh, configuration and also you have full accountability of who is doing what, right? Um, uh, so let's do this again. I want to show you something else. Uh, so while we are in, on the subject of uh, DevOps, right? Uh, so let's do this again. Mm, so we can do this and this. We can add a new monitor again. Edit in Red by D. And then, so let's do like this. So I'm going to add a new uh, stanza again. Uh, so we are going to pull this up in a bit of, uh, in a different way, right? Uh, so I'm going to commit again. And then it's going to ask me what I'm doing. Uh, showing. Right, and I'm going to create a merge request. Uh, source branch one. Yeah, there was a uh, open merge request in between, uh, so I had to pull and push again. Uh, but yeah, so the changes are uh, here, and then so th this is the change that we have one of the. Uh, on our input right uh, so we go back to the server again right uh, and then what i want to do is instead of uh, doing like this i want to do it via answer right so the way you do it is uh, let me show you the answer file uh, so th this is it uh, we do a simple task right uh, uh, we are pulling it on a local host. My secrets are on a uh, Ansible vault. I'm um, just saying uh, destination should be deployment apps and pull from GitLab. That's it. Uh, username and password we define on your uh, Ansible uh, vault, right? And then you are saying uh, your version should be master. Right. So now we do Ansible. I have the command here. Ansible playbook. Uh, the uh, playbook name and then ask for the world password right. uh, so uh, putting the world password yeah so it downloaded from gitlab change one uh, so now if you do here we do a cat uh, we have our ansible input as well right um, so uh, the reason why you would do it is two things, right? Um, one is um, a server can die anytime, right? Uh, 
and when the server dies it will take with it all your configuration files so if you don't have a backup you are looking at uh, losing out uh, your data flow um, so if you are losing your deployment server it's going to take some time to get all the uh, configuration back so if you lose important uh, files like your custom apps right your dashboards like let's say you don't have a backup of your search it right and all your dashboards are custom built right and if the search it dies then that is a problem right uh, so you could create new projects uh, just the way I shown you uh, create a new project uh, go to your search head initialize uh, get add all the configurations and just uh, continue right so you have a proper backup of all your configurations right um, and yeah um, other thing is um, you don't know who is making what changes to your Solanka environment so if you have this process in place right um, you can uh, have proper accountability and the final part is uh, it does have good CACD support right uh, so you don't even have to uh, go to your server to push this right so once the uh, CACD pipeline is set up you can do a continuous deployment like you can create all your configuration files here use Ansible or uh, whatever um, automation tool that your organization is um, happy with and then uh, you can just um, push it from here so without even logging into your uh, servers you can make changes and it will um, actually make your life much easier right and you can you can be assured that even if the servers fall off your data is actually being backed up if you're on a cluster um, so but what is not being backed up is your configuration files so once you put something like gitlab G github something like that in place um, that part will be covered as well uh, you can reach out to me uh, if you have any doubts regarding this and uh, i'll be happy to help right. uh, thanks guys